Hi there, it's our pleasure to have you join us for another informative edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Adrian Atkinson. Inside the pages today, HealthWise explores how you can take care of your heart. We are also looking at what you can expect for Expo Jamaica. Stick and stay for these and more interesting features you don't want to miss. It all unfolds right after this important message. Know your numbers and control the keys to a healthier heart. Know the numbers for your blood pressure, cholesterol level, blood glucose level, and your weight and body mass index. Find out the risks they represent and what you need to do to stay healthy. Talk to your doctor and start making healthy lifestyle choices to prevent a heart attack or stroke. Thanks again for being here. Moving along this half hour journey inside Jamaica Magazine, we now turn the pages for a look at what you can expect from the JMEA Expo Jamaica trade show that's now on at the National Arena and National Indoor Sports Center. The 48th staging of Expo Jamaica promises to be another great showcase of what's made on the island. Benchmarked against the best trade shows in the world, this spectacular event will transform the National Arena and the National Indoor Sports Center into a buyer's and seller's paradise from April 27 to 30. It's a multi-sectorial show. So there are going to be a number of exhibitors from various um, sectors, including um, chemicals, construction products, furniture and bedding, the food and agro products, of course, uh, minerals and, and, and metals, the print industry, um, packaging and labeling, um, textile and apparels, art and craft, um, the information technology, IT and, and communication sector, um, of course, from the, from the business community and supporting supporting um, government agencies such as the Trade Board and um, the Bureau of Standards. This fantastic business exhibition and matchmaking platform returns face to face after hiatus caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Our last staging was in 2018. It was unbelievable. Um, it's, you know, to be on the floor, you're, you're, there's so much positivity. Everybody is so energized. Everybody is so excited about showing off what the, the future of Jamaica is. And it's going to be no different um, in this showing. Jamaica's finest emerging manufacturers and service providers will be parading their craft in the Jamaica Emerging Manufacturers and Service Providers Gems Village. Female and young entrepreneurs in emerging sectors such as nutraceuticals, um, cosmetics, the beauty care industry, aromatherapy, spa products, um, and the, a lot from the micro and small enterprises um, will, be, will be featured there. The Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce has taken on the title sponsorship for the event. This in line with its thrust to achieve exponential export growth with this year's theme, Connecting Jamaica to the World. When the Jamaica Manufacturers and Exporters Association approached us at the Ministry, um, it was a no-brainer for us to say, well, it's a big one coming out of the pandemic. The Ministry of uh, Industry, Investment and Commerce um, the Jamaican Business Ministry is fully supporting exports and there's a, a, a strong reason for that. We have a small market and a small per capita GDP. Therefore, to expand our market, we must absolutely find new, richer markets overseas that people can buy our products and we cannot stay in Jamaica and just expect them to, to know our products. So we have to put on expos. The event will allow Jamaican businesses to meet buyers from all over the globe. Well over 300 buyers from 20 countries have already registered to participate, and the numbers keep increasing. 
The Expo Jamaica team is partnering with Jampro, the lead in buyer recruitment to attract more international buyers for the event. Significant support is also being generated from the local tourism industry for import substitution through buyers participating from that industry. Persons or businesses interested in becoming buyers will be accommodated through the event and are encouraged to register through the website and reach out to the buyer recruitment team at Jampro's offices. Um, we're going to be selling tickets to the patrons through our online platform also. Um, the, Expo, the, the Expo Jamaica website is expojamaica.com. JM. For Saturday and Sunday, April 29 and 30, gates will reopen at 10 o'clock in the mornings and close at 10 p.m. in the evenings. Organizers are looking forward to seeing more than 20,000 patrons attending over the period. On the public days, there will be a kids zone, sponsored by True Shake as well as a farmer's market. The expo has the significant backing of various departments and agencies of the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, as well as strong corporate sponsorship support. Congratulate all of them, because something as big as this and as important as this cannot be done without the significant and uh, uh, financial, strong financial support of the sponsoring group of um, companies. And it's a great expo to come to, to talk business. Um, you will see Jamaican business at its best. So here's the opportunity, let's make it work. Virgin, the road signs make the traffic environment safe. The green light means go. Red means stop. Amber also means stop. Yeah man, it don't mean you must speed up. And get this, even if the light's on green, when the traffic is thick, don't bother move off and block the intersection. And please, don't stop on a pedestrian crossing. Look out for children, the disabled and the elderly. Follow the signs so they all can arrive alive. Be a good road user. Obey the road signs and look out for each other. The development of industries and the growth and expansion in local and cross-border trade is anchored on the key services of the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce. We now look at this ministry's offerings on this next leg of the Jamaica Magazine journey. The Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, MIC, supports several critical growth-inducing sectors spread across the island. Meet the visionaries behind the state's provision of an enabling environment where businesses grow, flourish and expand beyond our shores. The Ministry provides a range of services to support MSME growth and development in Jamaica. Some of these include capacity building services for MSMEs access to traditional and non-traditional financing for business development, technical assistance for MSMEs digitalization and digital transformation, support for entrepreneurship and business startups, business formalization services, and facilitation services for MSMEs participation in public procurement. The Business Ministry's MSME division is committed to MSME growth and development. The trade unit provides technical support and advice to local manufacturers and exporters in areas focusing on rules of origin, market access, as well as technical barriers to trade which impact manufacturers accessing international and regional markets. Our services include advocacy for the business community, including local manufacturers and exporters, representation of issues affecting trade at both the international and the regional level. We also assist in developing policy positions at international negotiations and developing both defensive and offensive positions. 
Finally, we also do assist or we do provide the private sector with technical advice in terms of providing assistance, policy recommendations or guidelines on issues impacting trade and how we can navigate um, to increase trade and increase exports. The Business Ministry's trade unit is committed to increasing trade and growing exports. The Commerce Division supports the competitiveness of Jamaican businesses through the following service offerings. We process applications to allow for the suspension of the common external tariff, which allows for the importation of raw materials and other manufacturing inputs duty-free. We also prepare certificates under the safeguard mechanism that enable the manufacturing sector to use inputs from non-CARICOM markets and still have their products qualify for duty-free access to the CARICOM region. We also provide trade information to CARICOM on the ability of local companies to supply goods to the region. Additionally, we process applications from entities to remove limited from the names of companies in keeping with Section 16 of the Companies Act. The Business Ministry's Commerce Division is committed to enabling business success. The Investment Division facilitates both foreign and local direct investments by improving the business environment through laws, regulations, incentives, and international agreements and treaties. The Business Ministry's Investment Division is committed to increasing investments in Jamaica. The Division is responsible for implementing certifiable quality management systems in ministries, departments and agencies with a particular focus on ISO 9001. The Business Ministry's ISO Quality Division is committed to a culture of quality and promoting quality management systems across the public and private sectors. In the Industry Division, we offer two key services to support local manufacturing and other businesses. We process applications for the Productive Inputs Relief Incentive for Manufacturing, and this offers duty-free entry of your raw materials, capital equipment, intermediate goods, and packaging materials to go into your production process. Permits in this regard are valid for up to three years. Secondly, we process applications for special permits for the export of restricted items under the Trade Scrap Metal Regulations. The export of these restricted items, such as scrap copper or train tracks, is prohibited without the approval of the Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce. Note that special permits are valid for one shipment only. The Business Ministry's Industry Division is committed to manufacturing growth and sustaining industries. This is Jamaica's business ministry, driving the island's push towards First Nation status and the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. Water is precious. So we encourage everyone to practice the four R's of water conservation. Always remember to reduce your use of water wherever possible. Replace water wasting devices with water savings devices. Reuse water wherever possible. And wherever leaks are found, please repair them and repair them quickly. Don't delay. Practice the four R's of water conservation today. Healthy lifestyle choices can lower our risk for diseases while also preventing other serious chronic conditions such as type 2 diabetes. In this next feature, we learn about how to take care of our heart and live longer, healthier lives. Anna, you know you're special, very, very special to me, Anna. 
Yes, Mom, I know. And today, I want to have a special conversation with you about taking care of your body. Okay, Ma, what do you mean? All right, so today we're going to talk about uh, taking care of a very special part of your body, and that's your heart. Do you feel the heart beating? Yes, and I'm going to talk to you about taking care of your heart. Oh, I see. Yes, I learned about the heart in school. Wow, you're so smart. You normally go unaware of it beating 100,000 times per day as you move about. But what if it stopped and you could have prevented that? This complex and delicate organ is responsible for pumping the blood supply that carries oxygen and the nutrients needed for your body to function properly. It's time to stop and find out what you need to do to keep your heart beating. Professor Ernest Madhu is an internationally recognized nuclear cardiologist, as well as the founder and chairman of the Heart Institute of the Caribbean. He tells us what is normal in heart health. If you're looking for what is a normal heart rate, it's usually, we say it's about 60 to 100 beats per minute. Uh, normal blood pressure, we want to keep it systolic, the top one. The, it should be around 120 and the bottom one should be less than 70. Those will be what we'll consider normal. Uh, if it's high, it's hypertension. If it is low, it's hypotension. Uh, so very high blood pressure is not good. Very low blood pressure can also cause problems. Uh, the very high heart rate is a problem. Very low heart rate is also a problem. It's only about the size of a fist, but has a huge responsibility as it bears the weight of supporting all the other organs in the body. To practice good heart health, you will first need to understand the risks of having a bad heart. Cardiovascular diseases, including heart disease and stroke, are the commonest cause of death and disability in Jamaica. We estimate, uh, just from our own um, studies, we estimate that perhaps more than 7,500 people have a heart attack every year in Jamaica the first time. And then about half of that number have a second heart attack. Many people with heart attack will not survive unless appropriate intervention happen in a timely manner. Leading the cause factors for poor heart health is obesity and preconditions such as diabetes and hypertension. The call remains loud for people to take seriously the lifestyle changes that support hearty living. Parents are encouraged to develop this culture in their children. Parents must adequately inform themselves because you can't train somebody what you don't know. Encourage your children to get out of the house and be active and exercise and watch your children what they eat and make sure their weight is ideal and begin early to train the children on the ways and the habits that they need to form early in life you know that can help to keep their risk for heart disease at bay research in the field of cardiology is growing providing more information to help us make wise choices for our heart health one of the major causes of heart failure especially in black people that is recognized now is called cardiac amyloidosis. And it used to be almost universally fatal, but now there are treatment options and there are diagnostic mechanisms for this. We're working with Yale University to launch that project here in Jamaica. So there's been a mountain of advances happening, whether it's cardiac imaging, personalized uh, medicine, uh, genomic uh, treatment strategies, uh, remote patient monitoring. On a personal level, Jamaicans are being urged to get active and do regular medical checkups. We also have to be mindful about the role of exercise and physical activity in protecting ourselves from heart disease and other non-communicable ailments that are associated with 
sedentary lifestyles or inactivity. Um, the Minister of Health, Dr. Tufton, has been aggressive in pushing you know, Jamaicans to get out and exercise. And I think that is a step in the right direction. Early detection is very important. You know, we need to recognize that the idea that every pain is gas is not helpful. You know, when people feel that discomfort, they need to seek medical attention. Mom, so what can I do to take care of my heart? So Anna, you know you have to exercise. So like playing that you always do. And also Anna, I need you to start eating those veggies, even the ones that you don't like. And I need you to go to bed on time as well. And guess what? Never forget to laugh, all right? Never forget to laugh. And you must not forget these tips, all right, Anna? You must take this throughout your life. Thank you so much for this talk, Mom. I will never forget it. All right, my sweet Anna. As we draw near the close of today's magazine, we're turning your focus now to planned developments by the government that will create greater convenience for citizens through the establishment of new urban centers. The following is an excerpt from the 2023-2024 budget presentation by Prime Minister the Most Honorable Andrew Holness. Madam Speaker, in 2017, we announced the Morant Bay Urban Center. Though we were set back by the pandemic, the construction phase of the project got underway in April 2022 with the start of proprietary works. Full construction has now begun, and the spaces dedicated to some of the major anchor clients are already being developed. Among the entities that will take spaces uh, in the town center are the St. Thomas Municipal Corporation, the Ministry of Justice, the St. Thomas Parish Court, and all other government entities located in Morant Bay, several private sector companies, including banks and BPOs, and quick services business. The old Goodyear factory, which has been idle for decades, is now being transformed into the new hub of economic and social activity for the parish of St. Thomas. The development will employ over 3,000 persons and bring modern services and facilities to the people of St. Thomas. I have directed the Chase Fund to start the process of building a museum in what will now be, after this is constructed, the old town of Morant Bay. That museum is to capture and properly document the history of the Morant Bay Rebellion and its defining impact on modern Jamaica. So we're not just trying to develop a modern town center and leave Morant Bay to, to die. No, the, the idea is that we will develop Morant Bay, preserve its historical buildings, put in a museum, and start to use it now for tourism, not just tourism for cruise ships, but to get our school children to take trips to go there. That process will start early in the next uh, fiscal year. Bonebrook Urban Center in Port Antonio follows the model of the Morant Bay Urban Center. The architectural designs for the project is complete and it is going through the approvals and permitting process. 126,000 square feet of rentable space will be constructed. Already, 54% of the space has been reserved. We have asked the Factories Corporation to also look at Negril. Negril is one of our premier tourist destinations and it is in need of a comprehensive plan to realize its potential. Within the upcoming fiscal year, we will present a comprehensive development plan which will include an international airport, a public beach park, a craft village, and with the help of the United Nations Environment Program, UNEP, a restored Royal Palm Reserve. Negril is without any major commercial, industrial, or civic complexes. I have tasked the FCJ with developing 
an urban center for the town, similar to Morant Bay and Boundbrook. The FCJ has identified land strategically located in the town center, and uh, we have started consultations with the relevant stakeholders regarding its use. Do not use your cell phone while driving, please. That call or text can wait. Do you really have to stream that video while driving? It's not worth your life, nor that of other road users. Stay alert, stay off your phone, and arrive alive. Final year Bachelor of Arts students in the Communication, Arts and Technology program at the University of Technology, UTech, will be hosting a free exhibition for the public. Media Magnified will open to the public on Wednesday, May 3, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. inside the University's Shared Facilities Lecture Theatre 50 on the Papine campus. The event is being staged under the theme, Shaping the Future of the Creative Industry. The exhibition will also be streamed on UTEC's YouTube channel. It will showcase the work of talented final year media students in film, print, audio, campaign and website design. Media Magnified will also include networking sessions and a panel discussion on exploring creative trends and concepts in media. See you there. In observance of Cervical Cancer Awareness Month, the Southeast Regional Health Authority, SARA, will continue to provide free pap smear and breast cancer screenings, as well as HPV vaccines to members of the public. The screenings and vaccination will be offered to females between the ages of 9 and 26 and males aged 9 to 14 years in Kingston and St. Andrew and St. Catherine on the last two days of this month. The SARA team will be at the Greater Portmore Health Centre on Saturday, April 29, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. On Sunday, April 30, they will be at the Oak Glades Health Centre, the St. Diego Health Centre, and the Sydenham Health Centre in St. Catherine from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. For further information, contact SARA at 876-816-8058 or visit their website, sarah.gov.jm. And that's all for Community Notices this Saturday. If you have a community event to share on our notice board, give us a call at 876-922-8680 or email cbishop at jis.gov.jm. And this is where we end the program for today. Be sure to join us again tomorrow for another show. Until then, there is more you can watch by visiting our website, jis.gov.jm. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Walk good, live good, and see you next time. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Jamaica.